Hello friends, do we need pupil expansion devices for managing small pupils in manual SICS? So I'll try to answer this question. This is an elderly patient with multiple complexities, a non-dilating pupil, pseudo exfoliation, loose zonules, bulky nucleus. It has mild phacodenesis as well. I begin by making the posterior limbal paracentesis incisions. I'm using these hooks to stretch and dilate the pupil. These are not iris hooks, they are sort of capsular hooks and my plan is to use the same hooks to engage the capsular bag if the need arises because of the loose bag. I made 4 paracentesis incisions for the hooks. As I am puncturing the capsule, the compromised zonular apparatus is quite evident. The bag is wobbly, saving the bag is a challenge. The rexus is created but it turns out to be smaller than what I actually intended it to be, owing it to the loose zonules. I introduce another hook to the main incision and I can see better and I can control what I am cutting and what I am tearing. So now I have a decent sized rexus. Hydrodissection is performed. The nucleus is delivered bimanually out of the capsular bag. The two superior hooks are removed. The nucleus is delivered out using this phaco sandwich technique. Cortex extraction again is an extremely challenging step in such eyes as the bag can come along with the cortex when you're trying to aspirate it. Again, the hooks provide us an excellent view so that the mishap can be prevented. Good visualization helps me to introduce the CTR into the bag, which makes further steps of the surgery significantly safer. The lens is implanted, the hooks are removed, that's it. Now moving to the next case. This was done 4 years back and it shows my inability to read the situation well enough. Another challenging case, small pupil, pseudo exfoliation, loose bag. I thought I can make a bigger rexus in this eye, but I underestimated the zonular weakness. As I'm performing rexus, I realize that it's extremely difficult to tear and make a bigger rexus simply because of the extremely loose zonules in this eye. There is a higher risk of inadvertent intracapsular extraction if I proceed with nucleus maneuvering with this sized rexus. I desperately need to make a bigger rexus. But I could perform a bigger rexus only after stabilizing the bag with the CTR. I am finding it difficult to insert the CTR into the bag because of the small pupil. After a couple of failed attempts, I could manage it to get it right into the bag after retracting the pupil with a Sinsky hook. Now the pupil has gone very small. I can't see well enough to do a bigger excess. So I finally considered defeat and went back to the hooks to bail me out of the situation. As the four hooks are in place, the picture dramatically changes. Everything looks so routine now. I can see well, I know what I am cutting and tearing. After enlarging the rexus, the nucleus is maneuvered out of the bag and then out of the eye. In the background, we have a blue glow instead of the typical orange one. Dye has escaped across the compromised zonules into the burger space. The lens is implanted, vitreous plops is ruled out. The moral, surgery could have been much more simpler had I used the iris hooks from the beginning. The final case, a rigid pupil planned for phaco, used a BX ring. Unfortunately, the rexus has gone radial and I have decided to convert to SICS. The first thing I need to do is to get the ring out and use hooks instead. Ring expansion devices are not ideal for managing nucleus in SICS. Hooks are the one to be used. The nucleus is gently manipulated out of the bag and then sandwiched out. At this point, we need to realize one important thing. The most fundamental principle of surgery is to see well. Now since the pupil is well dilated because of the hooks, 
The surgery has become so simple. I can see where is the cortex. I am sure that I am not catching the tone anterior capsule instead of the cortex. The surgery has become much more safer and predictable now. I could place the right lens in the bag. So in spite of the rexus running away, we could achieve the best possible outcome in this eye without any compromise. To conclude, not all small pupils require iris hooks, but there are a lot of situations where we do have many coexisting complexities like these. Loose zonules, bulky nucleus, compromised rexus, peripheral postcaps tear, and in such situations, iris hooks bail us out. They are saviors. They greatly enhance safety and minimize intraoperative complications. Let us remember that in SICS, there are two distinct obstacles for nucleus management, the rexus and the pupil. We all know that getting a bigger rexus is critical and having a bigger pupil simply eases the job. So let us be sensible and use devices to expand the pupil. So my final remark would be, many of the surgeons don't use iris hooks. I would say that using iris hooks in manual SICS should not be considered a taboo. Thank you for attention.